This video will be video number two of my rod and reel arsenal that I'm taking to the KBF National Championship, covering my spinning rods and my cranking setups. Alright, welcome back. So, this will be video two of our ta my tackle prep for the KBF National Championship. I'll be leaving tomorrow. I'm getting everything ready right now, so I just go through the rods and reels as I'm packing them up. So, in this video, I'm covering my spinning rods and my cranking rods. Uh, what you'll notice, the previous, previous video was all my ALX rods and my, uh, you know, my all my good bait casters and stuff like that. Uh, be, this is all Phoenix rods, or sort of, and uh, kind of a mostly dollar reel. So, it's, like I said, still love my dollars. Still love my Phoenix rods. Let's see what I got here. So, first up, got a seven foot spinning rod. This is a seven foot light power fast action. And uh, this is my drop shot rod. So, a dedicated drop shot. The only thing pretty much that I'm going to do that I'll consider even doing with this for the most part is going to be a drop shot. Uh, this is spooled with, I believe it's 14 pound gliss, which is a monotex line. Uh, it's similar to braid, but instead of actually being woven, all the fibers are laid together and they're fused together. So it's got no stretch like braid. It's really strong like braid, but super, super slick. It casts a mile, um, and it's uh, it's really strong too. So I've been really happy with this stuff for a spinner rod. Uh, and it's got an eight pound leader on it for now. Um, I'll also, you know, all subject to change. Honestly, I don't know how much I'm gonna use this. I don't know how much I'm gonna be throwing a drop shot, but uh, that's my drop shot rod, Phoenix Feather light with a, oh, forgot about the reel. <laughs> the uh, the reel is a Dawa Tatula LT. Uh, you'll notice a trend with these. This is a 3,000 size, and uh, I like a bigger reel, a bigger spinning reel for uh, finesse applications. It handles the line better. So the line, it's a bigger spool, the line comes off in, in uh, you know, more line per coil, and uh, less, less susceptible to line twists and wind knots and stuff like that. So... I've uh, been really, really happy with these reels. They're super light. They pair with this Phoenix Feather really well. And uh, all in all, I've just been really happy with this uh, with this setup, as you'll see as I go on. All right, so the next rod. This is a, another Phoenix Feather. This is a 7-foot medium fast action. Another Dawa Tatula 3000. And uh, this is my Wacky Rig rod. So uh, if I need to skip a Wacky Rig, hook's already on it, uh, this is the rod I go to. And this thing's put in some work, put some work, or put in some work for me last year. Um, the uh, the biggest bass I caught during a tournament last year, I caught it on the, the Santee Cooper Lakes at the Santee Cooper Open on this rod and reel combo. Uh, pulled a 21 and a half incher out from underneath a dock. So uh, this thing gets the job done. Like I said, super lightweight reel, nice tip on this rod, great for skipping. And uh, this is my uh, my wacky rig rod. So. Pink's Feather Medium, 7 foot, fast action, with a dollar to tool of light, or LT. Alright, next up, notice it's another Phoenix Feather. This is a Phoenix Feather Heavy, uh, 7 foot, and this is a Tatula uh, 4,000 size, so a bigger rod, or a bigger reel, I mean. Uh, this is spooled with, I believe, 20 pound, uh, either 20 or 25 pound, uh, suffix 832. Uh, this rod is a no kidding heavy power. Unlike most heavy power spinning rods, which are kind of the equivalent of maybe a medium heavy bait caster, this is a heavy rod. So, um, you know, they rate this thing up to one and three quarter ounce. I don't know if I throw anything that heavy with it, but I have no no qualms about skipping a half ounce jig up underneath a dock or something like that with this rod. That's what I need to do. So, um, like I said, I don't know how, I don't know how much use it'll get, but it'll be with me just in case I need it. So. It's a Phoenix Feather, 7 foot, heavy, with a Dawa Tatula uh, LT 4000. All right, now to my cranking setups. And you'll notice a trend. Uh, all but one of these are built on a, uh, or at least, or at least, are either Phoenix rods or built on a Phoenix blank. So um, this is a uh, Phoenix X series composite cranking rod. Uh, this is the X9, it's the 7 foot medium, uh, moderate power. I've got a Tatula 150 um, on here with, I believe this is 12 pound fluorocarbon. It needs new lines. This line will get replaced when I get to the NC uh, before I fish it. But this is just my basic, um, you know, medium diving crankbait, you know, 10 footer, just your standard 3 8 ounce crankbait. This is what I'm going to throw that on. So, 
uh, really sweet setup. I'm really happy with this thing. It'll throw a crankbait up a mile. Uh, it's been a, proven to be a pretty tough rod, and uh, and these Tatula 100s. This is the essentially the original uh, Tatula casting reel. Um, but when they went to the CT, which is more of a 100 size, they renamed this the 150. And uh, yeah, just awesome reel, and you'll notice a trend as I go through these. All right, next up, Phoenix X Series. This is the X10. Oops. The X10 this is the medium heavy. Uh, this has got a Tatula HD on it for now, but it's going to end up getting a 150 put back on it. Uh, that's on one of these other rods here. But uh, just a medium heavy cranking rod, square bill rod. I uh, can throw chatterbaits on this if I want to. Um, just a nice all around cranking rod. Nice, uh, nice parabolic bend. And uh, bend again, you can see it's got pretty heavy use. The grips are filthy on it. Uh, but this has just been a fantastic rod for me as well. So that is the Phoenix X10 medium heavy. Hey, there's a trend. Phoenix X11. So this is their heavy power, and this thing is an absolute beast. Uh, it'll throw a 10XD. It'll throw basically any crank in, or any crank bait out there. So uh, it's rated up to three ounces. I've thrown two and a half, uh, two and a half ounce baits on without any trouble. Um, and I use this for light, um, some light treble hook swim baits as well. So like the, um, like a River Sea S Waver 168 or something like that. I'll throw that on this rod for, for the most part. Uh, again, nice parabolic bend, but uh, it's got a ton of backbone. This, this is a stout rod. And uh, it'll, again, flung a bait an absolute mile. So. All right, this is the uh, kind of the lone standout. This is my, uh, this is a homemade and this is built on a rain shadow blank. I uh, made this rod, I think, two and a half years ago now. Uh, but it's stuck with me. I've been really, really happy with it. It just works really well. But it's a rain shadow, uh, seven foot, heavy power blank, uh, moderate action composite rod. Um, as you can see, I throw spinner baits on it. I throw spinner baits on it. I throw chatter baits on it. I throw uh, lipless on it. Uh, it's, it's got a little, uh, it's more of a mod fast than a real moderate. So it's got a little bit, a uh, little bit more backbone to it than the uh, those X series. So it's great for throwing a lipless crankbait, ripping it up out of the grass. Uh, also, it also makes it good for the, sing the bigger single hit baits. But uh, so that's a home built, and it's got its tool of 150 on it, and uh, this is spooled with 14 pound fluorocarbon right now. So this reel will probably end up on that medium heavy. All right, this is another one of my home builds, and uh, this is actually built on a Phoenix X12 blank. So it's a seven foot six medium heavy power, moderate action. Um, if I'm out cranking a big flat, throwing, you know, a uh, three eighths ounce to a half ounce bait, or actually up to about a five eighths ounce bait, this is the reel, or this is the rod and reel I'm gonna go with. Uh, 12 pound Seaguar uh, and Vizex, and this is my one non-Dawa cranking reel. Uh, this is a Concept Z. Um, I've got kind of mixed emotions about this reel. When it's on, it is on. It's smooth. It throws. It'll throw a bait a mile. Uh, minimal backlash. Where I've had problems with this reel is the brakes on it tend to be really, really flaky. So towards the end of the day, as the reel starts getting wet, the brakes in there start getting wet, and the brakes start becoming really, really inconsistent. So one cast it'll be great. Next cast it'll be great. Next cast the reel just explodes on me. Spend the next ten minutes picking a backlash out and then go back to casting and it'll be okay and then all of a sudden boom the reel will explode two casts in a row um, but you know the last time I had it out it was it was dialed so um, I've got another one of these that's kind of a franken reel that I'll talk about in its, its own video uh, after I've had a chance to, to put it through its paces but uh, this is just a basic concept Z and uh, again home built rod on a Phoenix X12 blank that's just been putting good work for me and then my last dedicated cranking rod, uh, this is actually built on a Phoenix X13 blank. It's another one of my home builds. Um, so this is the 7 foot 6 version of that X11, that heavy cranking rod. Um, I don't like throwing swim baits as much on this one. This is more what I'm throwing a um, the bigger square bills. So 2.5s and 4.0s. Every once in a while, I'll lob an 8.0 on it, but I don't because of the length. I don't really like throwing the big heavy crankbaits on this rod. Um, but uh, this thing's got you know plenty of backbone and uh, plenty of of who ought to really chuck a bait out there. Um, so been uh, been really happy with this rod. 
Tatula 150, and again, 14, I believe this is 14 pound uh, fluorocarbon on here as well. So those are my spinning rods and my cranking rods that are going to meet the KBF National Championship. And uh, up next will be uh, kind of my babies. So, hey, tune in for more. Until next time, cheers and tight lines.